All right, one of the students asked me this vector question from IGCAC MF. I guess it's from the 2017 October November variant 2 3. All right, let's have a look how to solve these vector questions. Uh, it's not really hard, but then you kind of need to get the idea on how to solve it. Okay, first thing is we're trying to label all the information we have here. O to A is A, so this one will be A. O to B is B, this one is B. O to C is 1.5B, 3, 3 over 2, you should know is 1.5. Okay, so basically O to C is 1.5B, then B to C is 0.5B. Okay, 0.5B. Or you can say it's half B, all right? All right, then C to A is, uh, uh, C to D is 3A. 3A. So at least I know OA is parallel to OD. Why I know? Because both of them have A only. Right, the first one is one mark only. They ask you to uh, express OX since if OX is equals to lambda OD. So OX equals to the lambda. What is my OD? O to D is basically is O to D is OC plus CD. OC plus CD. O to C is um, 1.5B or 3 over 2B. CD is 3A. Just like that, done. But normally I don't like to leave my answer like this. I will just uh, multiply lambda into both of them and I prefer to write A first. 3 lambda A plus 3 over 2 lambda B. I prefer to leave my answer in this form because I guess later I need to do the comparing. All right, then for part B over here. Okay, AX equals to the mu AB express the OX in terms of mu a and b. Okay, the mu is basically just an m, la, just something like lambda, just another sign. All right, so over here, I know the ox actually hidden uh, inside the ax here. So I, I'm going to separate them, become ao plus ox, because I need to express ox. So if you couldn't see this, then you might have some problem here. So the mu I'll put here. Okay, ab is basically is ao plus ob. Okay, we know OA is A. If O to A will be A, then A to O will be negative A because opposite direction, isn't it? OX is what I want as a subject, so I will leave it there. So here will be negative A plus B. Okay, so I want to make OX as a subject and then this one I multiply in will be negative MA plus MB or you call it mu A plus mu B plus A here. All right. This one is the final answer, but like I say, I prefer to group them in A and B. So I have one A minus M A. So this one called one minus M A. If I factorize out A plus M B. Okay, so this is my answer for part two. All right, then part three, they ask you to use the two expressions of OX to find the value of lambda and mu. This is the reason why I want to live like this because right now I want to sub OX into the OX to do the comparing of A and B. So the first OX, I have about 3 lambda A plus, 3 lambda A plus 3 over 2 lambda B. Then the next OX is this one, so which is 1 minus mu A plus mu B. All right, then what I want to do next is, I want to comparing the A, mean I comparing the number beside the A, and then I want to comparing for B. I want to compare the value beside the B here. Okay, you should be able to see it. I hope you can. So over here, I will just write comparing A. Then I have 3 lambda equals to 1 minus mu. All right, then if I comparing B, I will do the same thing. Because over here, you only have one equation, but you have four unknown, like lambda, mu, A, and B. So the comparing method is the best way of solving this. 3 over 2 lambda equals to mu. Alright, so over here, I will call this one as first equation, this one is second equation, then I will sub the first equation into the second equation. Because this one mu already at the subject, so it, I can straight away solve it. My equals to 1 minus 3 over 2 lambda. So 3 lambda minus 3 uh, plus 3 over 2 lambda equals to 1. Then this one will be 6, it will be 9 over 2 lambda equals to 1. Then I should be able to get my lambda value here, which, which is... Uh, then my lambda should be 2 over 9. 
All right, then I will sub my lambda value into here, which is the two over nine. It goes to my mu here. Two and two I cut. This one and this one I cut. My mu equals to one over three. All right, after I got the uh, lambda and mu, normally I prefer to sub back to the equation. So if I sub back into here, Ox equals to, what is the lambda again? 2 over 9. 2 over 9 of OD. Then the next one is Ax equals to, mu is 1 over 3, isn't it? 1 over 3 of AB. Okay, this is what happened. I sub it back. Then I go to the part 4 and 5. Basically, they ask about the ratio. Okay, so they ask us to find the ratio for Ax uh, over Xb. So what I want to do over here is Ax and Xb, I guess is related to this one. Okay, doesn't, I don't see Xb here, but I see something to do with Ab. So I'm trying to figure this out. So over here, if I were to change them into the fraction, Ax over Ab, equals to 1 over 3, isn't it? Because I throw the AB to the other side, become divide AB. Then I know AX ratio AB is 1 ratio 3. So A to X is ratio 1. A to B is ratio 3. Then here will be 2. How do I get 2? Because this is 3, right? 3 minus 1, I get 2. Okay, you get the idea? So, okay, then the question asks me to do something like AX over XB, isn't it? Ax will be 1, Xb will be 2. So the answer is 1 over 2. Okay, so Ax, this is 1 over 2. Ax over Xb. Okay, this is how we do by understanding the ratio. Then, because ratio we can write in the fraction, at the same time, fraction we can write into the ratio. They are related. Okay, then we will do the next part. The next part is like um, Ox over Xd. So I guess it's something to do with this one. So let's solve this one first. So we have something like Ax, uh, Ox, sorry. We have something like Ox over Od equals to 2 over 9. Then I know Ox ratio Od is 2 ratio 9. Okay, so same thing. I throw my Od to the other side. is divide Od. Yeah? All right, then what I want to see here is O to X is ratio 2. O to X here is ratio 2. O to D is ratio 9. 9 minus 2 here will be 7. Okay, because the question asked me to do what? OX over XD. OX will be 2. XD will be 7. So the answer will be 2 over 7. Now we just insert the value because just one mark. This one should be 2 over 7. All right, this is how we solve this kind of question. I guess the student who asked me this question have the problem at the part 4 and 5. Yeah, because they are not familiar. Because a lot of students, they see ratio, right? They thought they must write in this form. But in fact, the ratio, we can write in the refraction form as well. There's no problem of doing that. All right. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.